Hello and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Well, ISRO's big launch is our top focus. Now, PSLV C-35 has lifted off uh, to place eight satellites into two orbits. We'll get you all the updates in the next uh, half an hour in this news bulletin and much more. Let us begin now with the headlines. BJP resolution underlines welfare of weaker sections. Prime Minister reaches out to Muslims, says that don't treat them as vote banks, treat them as your own. All eyes on Sushma Swaraj's address as the UN General Assembly. India is set to give a fitting reply to Pakistan Prime Minister's tirade on Kashmir. Vice President to embark on five-day two-nation tour of Nigeria and Mali today. Visit to garner support for India's push for global convention against terrorism at the United Nations. Floods claim 11 lives in Telangana. 17 NDRF teams deployed in flood-affected areas of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka as well. And the killings continue in Syria, 85 dead and 300 wounded as government forces continue to pound Aleppo. This as UN Security Council holds crisis meet to discuss the offensive. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the centre is committed to the development and welfare of the last person standing. Now, addressing the BJP Council meet in Kori Kori in Kerala on the concluded day on Sunday, the Prime Minister said that the party stands firmly behind the ideal of Antyode given by its ideologue Deen Dayal Upadhyay. The Prime Minister also reached out to Muslims saying that the community should not be a substance of hate or items of a vote market. He asked the party workers to treat the community as its own and ensure development reaches them. The Prime Minister stressed on the need for providing an alternative politics to the country while saying that all hope has not been lost. पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय जी जिनके हम शताब्दी मनाने जा रहे हैं वे हमें यही तो मंत्र देके गए थे अंत्योदय दरिद्र नारायण और शास्त्रों ने भी तो हमें सिखाया है जनसेवा ही प्रभु सेवा माइनॉरिटी की तरफ देखने का दृष्टिकोण क्या हो मैं पचास साल पहले पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय जी ने जो कहा था ताकि जिन लोगों को गलतफहमी हो उनको सोचने के लिए मजबूर करने वाली बात है पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय जी ने कहा था मुसलमानों को न पुरस्कृत करें और न ही उनको तिरस्कृत करें बल्कि उनका परिष्कार करे मुसलमानों को न वोट की मंडी का माल और न ही कोई घृणा की वस्तु समझे उसे अपना समझे in related news, the three-day-long BJP conclave due to a close on Sunday with the party passing a resolution on the birth centenary year of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. Now, the main thrust of the resolution was inclusive growth. BJP President Amit Shah made a special statement during the presidential address before the presentation of the resolution. He said Pakistan was backing terrorism and that India would take all efforts to fight out terrorism from the country. He asserted Kashmir is an integral part of India and no one can separate the state from the country. Nitin Gadkari presented the draft resolution and said the Dharal birth centenary year will be observed as a poverty alleviation year by BJP. The party also blamed the Congress for the disparities faced by weaker sections of the society. Bharatiya Janta Party and Bharatiya Janta Party ki sarkar ka suru aase terrorism ke pati zero tolerance ka raviya raha hai humara abhigam raha hai हम आतंकवाद को सहन नहीं करते इसके खिलाफ लड़ाई लड़ने के लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता भारतीय जनता पार्टी और भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार कटिबद्ध इस प्रकार की हरकत करकर अगर कोई दीवा स्वप्न देखता है 
कि कश्मीर को भारत से अलग कर देंगे तो वो लोग याद रखे ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार है ये तभी सच न होने वाला जिला स्वप्न सिद्ध होने वाला कि हमारे समाज में सोशल इक्वेलिटी एंड इकोनॉमिक इक्वेलिटी सामाजिक न्याय और आर्थिक न्याय इज ए पार्ट ऑफ कन्विक्शन फॉर अवर पार्टी ये हमारे पार्टी का कन्विक्शन है ये हमारी कटिबद्धता है और हमारे देश में हम निश्चित रूप से इस स्थिति को निर्माण करेंगे कि जहां सोशल इक्वेलिटी होगी और इकोनॉमिक इक्वेलिटी होगी On to news from Jammu and Kashmir, well, after being shut for 79 days, markets across Kashmir opened on Sunday after 2 p.m. Now, curfew was lifted from all parts. There was heavy rush of customers thronging shops as the curfew was lifted. Now, shops and business establishment had remained closed for 79 days due to separatist call for shutdown. The traffic jams were witnessed in the commercial hub of Lal Chowk and in adjoining areas of the city, while other district towns also witnessed the movement of large number of vehicles. The separatist group uh, have announced a 16-hour relaxation in the shutdown till 6 a.m. today. No untoward incident has been reported. Now, there were attempts, uh, though, to disturb peace with miscreants uh, pelting stones on shopkeepers when they were opening their shops uh, today in Sopor. Police and a security force uh, deployment immediately reached the spots and chased away the miscreants and normalized the situation. As many as 82 people, including two cops, have been killed and thousands of others have been injured in the unrest that started after Hezbollah Mujahideen militant Burhan Wani was killed in an encounter with the security forces on 8th of July. In related news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reiterated that those guilty for the Uri militant attack will not go unpunished. Modi said this in the 24th edition of his monthly Man Ki Baat radio program on Sunday. He also said that it was the responsibility of the administration to bring peace to strife torn Kashmir. This Kairana Ghatna for a Desh ko Jagjor Nikli Kafi Thi. Desh me shog bhi hai, akrosh bhi hai. Ar yekshati sirabun parivaro ki nahi hai. Jinon apna beta khoya, bhai khoya, pati khoya. ये क्षति पूरे राष्ट्र की है और इसलिए मैं देशवासियों को आज इतना ही कहूंगा और जो मैंने उसी दिन कहा था मैं आज उसको फिर से दोहराना चाहता हूं कि दोषी सजा पा करके ही रहेंगे कश्मीर के नागरिकों की सुरक्षा ये शासन की जिम्मेवारी होती है कानून और व्यवस्था बनाने के लिए शासन को कुछ कदम उठाने पड़ते हैं मैं सुरक्षा बलों को भी कहूंगा कि हमारे पास जो सामर्थ्य है शक्ति है कानून है नियम है उनका उपयोग कानून और व्यवस्था के लिए है कश्मीर के सामान्य नागरिकों को सुख चैन की जिंदगी देने के लिए है और उसका हम भली भांति पालन करेंगे Meanwhile, oil eyes are on External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj, who will articulate India's response at the UN General Assembly today. Now, Swaraj, in her address, is expected to deliver a stinging response to Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's tirade on Kashmir. Now, India's a strong right of a reply to his speech called Pakistan, home to the Ivy League of Terrorism and a terrorist state that commits war crimes by using terrorism as an instrument of state policy. Now, India has been uh, keeping uh, the focus on its primary concern on terrorism at the UN summit and Sushma Swaraj is expected to take it to its conclusion today. UN has been given its own way to give its own way. As many countries have heard all the languages, one thing is very clear that the people of Pakistan who are Pakistan or the people of Pakistan are not a taker. और हमने जो टेररिज्म के ऊपर बात कही है जो प्रधानमंत्री बात कही है जो सुषमा जी बात कर रही है बार बार कह रही है उसका असर तो आप देख रहे हैं ना उसका असर तो आपके सामने है ना दुनिया अब उस बात को समझने लगी है और कह रही है कि हाँ हम जो कह रहे हैं सही कह रहे हैं क्योंकि हम ईमान से कह रहे हैं हम अपनी ईमानदारी से कह रहे हैं हम सबूत से कह रहे सबूत के बेसिस पे कह रहे हैं on to some other news, well, India will ratify the Paris Climate Change Agreement on 2nd of October. Well, this was announced by the Prime Minister during his address to the BJP National Council in Kerala on Sunday. The sudden announcement will give momentum to the implementation of measures at international level to control global warming. 
Prime Minister Modi said that he had chosen the date, which is next Sunday, as Mahatma Gandhi's life was an example of minimum carbon footprint. Now, during the Paris climate meet in December last, more than 190 nations had agreed on setting ambitious goals for capping global warming and uh, funneling uh, trillions of dollars to poor countries facing climate catastrophe. The pact will come into force after it's, uh, it is going to be ratified by at least 55 nations that account for 55% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Now, talking about the need to ratify the COP21 decision, Prime Minister Modi said that there is a looming threat due to global warming to many coastal countries and cities. The U.S. has welcomed the surprise decision. U.S. Ambassador to India Richard Verma tweeted the U.S.'s appreciation of India's move. Now, he said, and I quote, we welcome the news. India will join the Paris Agreement on 2nd of October. Congratulations, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for your leadership to act on climate. आज मैं 25 सितंबर पंडित दिनदाल उपाध्याय की जन्म सती पर पूरे विश्व के सामने घोषणा करना चाहता हूं कि 2 अक्टूबर एक सप्ताह के बाद महात्मा गांधी की जन्म जयंती पर भारत को 21 के जो निर्णय किए गए हैं जिसमें भारत ने अपनी जो जिम्मेवारी उठाने का फैसला किया है उसको हम 2 अक्टूबर को रेटिफाई करेंगे क्योंकि महात्मा गांधी का जीवन महात्मा गांधी का जीवन मिनिमम कार्बन फुटप्रिंट वाला जीवन था यह बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है कि पेरिस समझौता आखिर रेटिफाई होगा और भारत ने उसमें भी प्रमुख भूमिका की है खुद होकर घोषित किया है कि 2 अक्टूबर को हम रेटिफाई करेंगे and on to the other big story, well, Istro has launched its first ever multiple satellite from Sri Harikota. Well, in its first multi-orbital launch, India injected eight different satellites, including the country's weather satellite, SCAT, SAT-1, and five from other nations into two different orbits. Well, India's workhorse, the PSLV C-35, was launched from the first launch pad of a Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota, at 9.12 a.m., and it carries uh, the 371 kilogram SCAT Sat 1 along with seven other satellites, including from the US and Canada. While SCAT Sat 1 was released uh, first into a 730 kilometer PSLV orbit, after the, after the rest will be injected into a lower orbit of uh, 689 kilometers after around two hours. Well, according to ISRO, this is the first mission of uh, PSLV in which it will be launching into payloads into two different orbits. On to some other news, well, Vice President Mohamed Hamid Ansari will embark on a five-day tour of Nigeria and Mali from today. The visit is expected to strengthen India's bilateral engagements with the two West African nations. Well, the visit is also likely to garner support for India's push for global convention against terrorism at the United Nations. Vice President Mohamed Hamid Ansari embarks on a five-day visit to Nigeria and Mali from today. He is being accompanied by his wife Salma Ansari, Minister of State for Finance Arjun Ram Meghwal, four MPs and senior officials for the tour. The Vice President will go to Nigeria first at the invitation of Vice President Yemios Bajo. In Abuja, Ansari will hold talks with Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari, Vice President Osin Bajo and other officials. He will deliver an address at the National Defence College of Nigeria and the Joint Business Forum at the University of Lagos. The Vice President will also inaugurate the High Commission of India Chancery Complex at Abuja and interact with the members of Indian community both in Abuja and Lagos. India and Nigeria are expected to sign a number of agreements during the visit. The President of Nigeria, along with the High Power Delegation, had participated in the third India-Africa Forum Summit held in New Delhi in October 2015. Honorable Vice President's visit intends to further strengthen the strategic partnership between the two countries, expand and diversify bilateral economic engagement, and explore new avenues of partnership on a wide range of issues of shared common interest. On the second leg of his trip, Ansari will go to Mali on 29th of September at the invitation of its Prime Minister Modi Bokita. Here, Ansari will meet the country's President, the Prime Minister and also address the National Assembly. 
It is noteworthy that Mali is crucial to India's interest in the field of investment and fight against terrorism. India has been a steadfast partner of Mali's reconstruction efforts, development and growth. India has extended seven lines of credit amounting to US dollars 353.60 million to Mali. Five of the LOC projects have been implemented in the areas of agriculture machinery, electrical transmission and distribution, and supply of railway coaches and locomotives. Nigeria and Mali, two Muslim-dominated West African nations, are important for India's strategic interests, with Nigeria especially crucial for the nation's maritime security. At a time when India is looking to isolate Pakistan in the United Nations and other international fora, the two nations can prove to be pivotal in India's endeavours. This is Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And in news at 10, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be back with more news, including uh, international news and sports news. Stay with us. I'm Amritan Shura. You're watching Constitutional Yours. We need to change according to times and situation. The state council has its own authority and similarly the state government has its own authority. The judiciary cannot become an administrator. Are they in any way accountable to the central government either directly or indirectly? Sir? Accountability has to be there at all levels. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Now, the flood situation in several parts of South India is grim. In Telangana, the death toll in the rain-related incidents has gone up to 11, with eight deaths reported in Medak district and three others in Varangal. Now, in view of the flood situation, Chief Minister K. Chandra Shekhar Rao has asked the ministers to work in coordination with the district-level officials and ensure the evacuation of people from the low-lying areas to safer places. The Chief Minister also directed Avarangal District Administration to be on high alert as River Godavari is in full spate. Meanwhile, with heavy rains lashing Andhra Pradesh as well, nine people have died so far. Chief Minister N. Chandra Babu Naidu conducted an aerial survey on Sunday for the second consecutive day and promised all help from the state government. The Chief Minister interacted with the locals and directed the officials to ensure necessary relief like food and drinking water are provided to the rain-hit people. And in Karnataka, three teams of the NDRF have been deployed in Bidar, Kalaburagi and Bangaluru districts. NDRF team deployed at Kalaburagi carried out a flood rescue operation and evacuated 21 maroon persons to safer places. Well, on to some other news, the Home Ministry has launched an FIR in connection with the missing documents related to the controversial Ishtra Jaha alleged fake encounter case. Now, an undersecretary serving in the Home Ministry has filed the FIR asking police to probe why, how and under what circumstances five documents related to the case went missing. Well, the move came after an inquiry panel concluded that the papers were removed knowingly or unknowingly or misplaced in September 2009, a period when Congress leader P. Chidamram was the Home Minister. The panel said that only one paper out of the five documents related to the case uh, went missing from the Home Ministry and that was found. The lodging of the FIR is expected to escalate a political slugfest between the BJP and the Congress. The BJP has been accusing Congress of lowering the fight against terror by filing the second affidavit in the case during UPA regime. The second affidavit that was filed in 2009 was different from the first one and had said that there was no conclu conclusive evidence to suggest that Ishra Jahan was an LET operative. अंतर्गत कुछ फाइले इधर उधर कर दी गई है और उसके संदर्भ में Let's now take a look at the events uh, that are lined up for the day. Here is the day ahead. 
The Supreme Court will hear the pleas that challenging the bail granted to RJD leader Mohammad Shahbuddin by the Patna High Court. Earlier on 19th of September, the Apex Court had sought a response from Shahabuddin on a separate plea filed by Chandrakeshwar Prasad, the father of three youths who were brutally killed allegedly by henchmen of the controversial politician. The Apex Court will also hear a separate plea filed by widow of journalist Rajdev Ranjan, who was murdered in Sivan district allegedly at the instance of Shahabuddin, seeking transfer of the case to Delhi. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav will expand his cabinet in perhaps the last reshuffle ahead of the assembly elections next year. This will be the eighth expansion of the Akhilesh Yadav government since he assumed office in 2012. Governor Ram Naik is scheduled to administer oath of office and secrecy to some new ministers at Raj Bhavan today. On the 19th day of the ongoing Kisan Yatra from Dioria to Delhi, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi will reach Mathura today. He will hold a roadshow at Mathura and would organize a rally. The rally will pass through the major areas of Rindawan and Mathura before converging into a general gathering at the Jubilee Park in the central park of the city. Let's get you some international news. Uh, first up, news uh, from uh, the Middle East. Well, in Syria, government forces continue to pound a rebel-held eastern Aleppo. On Sunday, at least 85 people were killed and 300 others were wounded as a result. Now, hundreds of airstrikes have plummeted the city. The bombard bombardment has been continuing ever since the Syrian government, backed by Russia, announced a renewed offensive following the collapse of a short-lived ceasefire. Well, the attacks came even as the United Nations Security Council held a crisis meeting on Sunday to discuss the offensive on Aleppo. At the meeting, diplomats exchanged fiery words. While the U.S. accused Russia of engaging in barbarism in Syria, Russia hit back, saying that the U.S.-led coalition support for rebels was hampering humanitarian efforts. The United States, Britain and France had requested the UN emergency session. Well, despite the bickering between U.S. and Russia, United Nations hoped that the solution could still be found with the talks, uh, though it added that the Syrian government's use of airstrikes may amount to war crimes. Russia and Assad have reportedly launched more than 150 airstrikes over the last 72 hours, killing at least 139 people and injuring hundreds more. Instead of pursuing peace, Russia and Assad make war. Instead of helping get life-saving aid to civilians, Russia and Assad are bombing the humanitarian convoys, hospitals, and first responders who are trying desperately to keep people alive. В результате на территории Сирии орудуют сотни вооруженных группировок. Территорию страны бомбят все, кому не лень. Возвращение страны к миру стало почти невозможной задачей. I am still convinced that we can turn the course of events. We have proven this more than once before, because uh, uh, any sign of me resigning would be a signal that the international community is quitting the Syrians. And the UN will never quit the Syrians, and neither will you. A big story coming in from the US. Well, millions of American voters will have the first opportunity to compare the presidential candidates side by side today when Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump meet in the first presidential debate in New York. The first of the three debates, Monday's face-off, is expected to draw in a record television audience. The two major party presidential nominees will share a stage for 90 minutes at uh, uh, Hampstead in New York. Now, the topics for Monday's debate are America's direction, achieving prosperity and securing America. The format calls for six 15 minutes a time segments. While Clinton needs to convince viewers that she is likable and trustworthy, Trump has to come across as temperamentally fit and qualified to be the president. Now, the second presidential debate will be held on the 9th and the 3rd on 19th of October. The only vice presidential debate is scheduled for 4th of October in Virginia. I think for her, it's really about uh, laying down the policies that she thinks will improve the economy, uh, make it an economy that's working for everyone, not for just for people at the top. But she has a challenge because uh, Donald Trump is uh, inveterately says things that aren't true. Presidential campaigns go on for a long time. 
but despite how long they are, there are only three moments where voters can look at candidates from two major parties next to each other on stage, head to head, face to face for the first time, and voters can make those decisions in real time. Let's get to some more international stories. Here is the world wrap. Police in Charlotte, North Carolina have released the, the officer body cam and dash cam footage of a controversial shooting of a black man on Tuesday. They also released pictures of a handgun and marijuana that police say Keith uh, Scott possessed. Earlier, Scott's wife uh, had released her own video from her phone. Now, Scott's family says that he was carrying a book and not a gun. Meanwhile, protesters in Charlotte marched uh, for the fourth night over the shooting. The disputed leader of Nigerian Islamist group Boko Haram has released a video message denying that he was killed or badly wounded in an airstrike. Now, Abu Bakr al Shekau appeared healthy in the video. It is not clear when it was recorded. In August, the Nigerian army had said that Shekau had been seriously wounded in an airstrike. Earlier this month, the Islamic State group to which Boko Haram has pledged allegiance announced that Shekau was being replaced as the leader. Two teenage girls from the French city of Nice are being held on suspicion of planning an attack. While searchers failed to find any weapons at their homes, the teenagers have admitted that they had been in contact with a French jihadist based in Syria and Iraq. The two teenage suspects live in the same area of Nice as Mohammed Bohlel, who drove the truck that killed 86 people in the city on 14th of July. The world's largest radio telescope began operations in southwest China on Sunday after five years of construction. Chinese scientists reported that the giant dish, which measures 1,640 feet across, is complete and has received its first signals from space. It will now take three years to calibrate the instrument so that it can become fully operational. And finally, on to some sporting action. On fifth day, India has strengthened its grip on the ongoing first test match between New Zealand and at uh, Kanpur. Well, today is the last day for Team India to win the match uh, after setting a target of 434 runs. At the end of a fourth day's play, New Zealand were 93 for 5. So 158 for 5. For four in their second innings the against India. At the moment, uh, the, why... the score is, well, is uh, a long off. Or maybe that's the 158 why he went for five. The the Remember earlier, Luke Ronchi on 38 and uh, Mitchell Santa on Chirinja 8 were at the piece. Post declared their second innings at uh, 377 runs for five wickets yesterday. For. Earlier New Zealand were all out for 262 in the first inning. Posts were all so out for 358 for five. Well, that's all in this edition of news, but news and updates continue on your channel. Thanks for watching.